Lord, we will begin our study for today. Um, we are in the book of John, St. John, and today we pick up where we left off in chapter 7, chapter 7 of the book of John, and uh, I think we will pick up from um, verse, um, verse 8, praise the Lord. We bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here another time. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies. Thank you, Lord, for the precious blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for your saving grace and your keeping power towards us. And as we come together today, Lord, we are grateful that you spare our lives and you allow us to come together in the sanctuary to glorify your name. Let your presence be with us. Bless us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, even as we open up the Word of God today. Make yourself known to us, their Father. Bless us, O oh God, those who are on their way. Bring them safely so that we can enjoy your blessings together. In Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so we are picking up in uh, verse 8 of chapter uh, 7 of the book of John. He said, Go ye up, uh, go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast. For my time is not yet fully come. Now, we, we started out last week and we saw where the brothers of Jesus, his family members, was urging him to go up to Jerusalem to the feast, um, the Feast of Tabernacle, so that he can show himself to the people. He can manifest uh, his miracles. He can make himself known to the people at Jerusalem. And last week we mentioned that at that particular time there was a lot of people who were gathered uh, in Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacle. And people were coming from all over the land of Israel and people from outside of Israel. Jewish people from outside, uh, outside of Israel will come together because they commemorate their journey, the journey of their forefathers during the time when they came out from Egypt, they were going to the Promised Land. That 40 years period that they spent journeying from Egypt to the Promised Land, they were living outside in the open, in tents. So to commemorate the journey of their forefathers sleeping outside in tents in the wilderness, the Jewish people, they developed this custom. And uh, that certain time when that time come around, they will gather from all over, and they will go to Jerusalem, and they will take uh, branches from the trees, and they will build little shacks or booths outside the temple yard or on the street. People who live in, in the vicinity, they will go in their backyard, or they will go up on their rooftops, and they will set up uh, branches, you know, make little booths, little huts, and they will sleep outside, and they will have a, a big... Uh, uh, festivity during that time. There's a great celebration that goes on in Jerusalem uh, during the time of the Feast of Tabernacle. It sometimes will go for about eight or nine days and the people will go to the temple, they will pray, they will offer sacrifice, and they will just enjoy themselves uh, in God's presence. So this was what was taking place here. So we see that Jesus' this, uh, brethren was encouraging him and urging him to go up to Jerusalem. And we started out last week, we saw that Jesus, he refrained from going to um, Judea because his life was threatened. His life was at stake. They were looking for Jesus to kill him. So Jesus, having all knowledge and uh, knowing ahead of time that they were looking to kill him in Judea, and knowing that his time for, for dying was not yet uh, come, it was not fulfilled. So therefore, he refrained from going to preach in Judea, and uh, he confined himself to Galilee, because he knew if he go to uh, Judea to preach, his life was at stake. So therefore, he did not go to Judea to preach for about six months. So after the end of this six months, here we have the the time of the tabernacle, and uh, his brethren, his family members, uh, is urging him to go up to Jerusalem and to manifest himself, to show off uh, his skills of performing miracles. And uh, the Bible tells us that the reason for that is that they did not believe 
in Jesus. Jesus, brothers and sisters, did not believe in him before his death, his burial, and resurrection. It's after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we saw that his brethren, um, they turn to him, they turn to, to God. They repent and they acknowledge him as Savior. But before that, they did not um, acknowledge Jesus, even though they probably was eyewitnesses to um, some, of, some of the miracles that was performed by him. So verse 8 tells us that Jesus is telling them, well, his time was not yet come for him to go up to the feast. So he said to them, you go up to the feast because your time is always uh, ready. Your time to go to the feast is always there. But my time is not yet come because Jesus was operating under divine appointment. And Jesus was on God's uh, uh, calendar. His time was governed by his father. But his biological brethren, his biological brothers and sisters, they could operate on any time schedule that they choose to because they were not on God's uh, program. Jesus was on God's uh, time plan, so therefore he had to do everything in accordance to the timing of God. And the time for him to go up to the feast at Jerusalem was not yet fulfilled. So he said to them in verse 8, Go ye up unto this feast, I go not up yet until unto this, unto this feast, for my time is not yet fully come. Now, Jesus didn't want to go up to the feast at that particular time, at the early stage of the feast, because he knew that the, the Jewish leaders, the leaders of the temple were waiting to arrest him and to put him to death. So therefore he postponed uh, the time for him to leave to go to the feast because, you know, they were living, um, you know, a little distance away from Jerusalem and it, take, it will take them a, t a certain period of time to walk, to journey, to go up to Jerusalem to reach there at the beginning of the feast. So apparently they probably wanted to start out ahead of time so they can reach there at the beginning of the feast. But Jesus didn't want to go up that particular time because he knew that these leaders, they were waiting for him to, to, to arrest him and eventually to put him to death. So he postponed the time that he wants to go up to the feast. So he said to them, you go up to the feast, for my time is not yet fully come. Now, as I said last week, some uh, people who criticize the Bible and try to find occasion in the Bible to point out that the scripture uh, contradict itself. They said that Jesus, he uh, lied or he tell a lie because they're saying that um, he contradict himself because he said that he wasn't going up to the feast and as soon as his brethren uh, leave to go up to the feast, he took his journey and he went up to the feast. So they're accusing uh, Jesus of telling a lie. That's people who criticize um, the scripture and try to find fault in the scripture. But if you, if you look at it very clearly, Jesus didn't say that he was not going to the feast. He said, go ye up unto, the, unto this feast, for I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet fully come. He said that he is not going up yet. He, he, in other words, he's not quite ready to go. His time to go up to the feast is not yet come. But what they are saying is that he said that he wasn't going to the feast. But this is not what the scripture is bearing out here to us. His time to go to the feast was not fully come, so therefore he did not go the same time with his brethren. Now in verse 9 it said, When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. So he remained in Galilee for a few more days uh, after his brethren took off to go to the feast because... We will, uh, you know, find out later on that Jesus, when he arrived at the feast, the feast was halfway through. He reached to the feast when the feast was about four days already in, in progress. So he did not go up at the early stage because he knew that they were waiting to, to kill him, to arrest him. And we will, we will come to that uh, in a later uh, portion here. Uh, it said in, in verse um, 10, but when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast 
not openly, but as it were in secret. Now, Jesus, he knows the end from the beginning. And uh, the omniscience, um, a tribute of God manifests in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, in that he knows things before it happens. And he knew that these Jewish leaders were waiting for him. And uh, if he, you know, should journey up to Jerusalem the same time when everybody else was going, it was a whole multitude of people who was on the road going to Jerusalem. And it was very easy for uh, these people because they were expecting their Messiah to come. And they were looking for Jesus to be that one, that Messiah who will deliver them from uh, the Roman uh, bondage that they were under. So uh, it, the, uh, Jesus knew in uh, the end before the beginning, knew in everything before it happened. He probably saw and he knew that if he go up the same time with all of these people going up to uh, Jerusalem, there's a possibility that these people can form themselves together and, uh, you know, go into Jerusalem in a way as if they are trying to overthrow the Roman yoke that was upon them. So he knew in all of this, and knew in that the, the Jewish leaders were waiting to arrest him, he didn't want to go up with that kind of fanfare. He didn't want to go up openly in that way with everybody else so he can be recognized. So when the road was clear and everybody already gone up to Jerusalem, the feast is four days you know, in progress, Jesus, he go up to uh, Jerusalem probably with his disciples because the Bible didn't really mention his disciples here, but I'm believing that his, his disciples probably was with him. So uh, him going up to Jerusalem at that time, as the Bible said, he, 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 he did not do it openly, but, he, he did, but as it were in secret, meaning that he went up when there was not a whole lot of travelers was going on that journey. So he did it privately. He went up secretly or privately, or he did it when it was not crowded on the road to go. So uh, verse, 10 tell, uh, verse 11 tells us, Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? Now, when, when in this text, uh, when it said the Jews, it's not talking about all of the Jewish people. A lot of times when you see the Bible mention the Jews, it's talking about the leaders. Now, because in that, at that time, all of the people, ethnically, they were all Jewish people. So when he mentioned the Jews here, he's talking about the guys who control uh, the temple, like the scribe and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all of these guys who were in the Sanhedrin uh, council. There were 70 elders who were in the Sanhedrin Council, and these guys have the authority over all of Israel. And they um, could give the decree for somebody to be arrested. They could sentence somebody, well, under, with, the, with the, um, you know, the, the approval of the Roman at that time, because they were under the Roman leadership, and they couldn't just put people to death. They have to get the Roman to approve sentencing somebody to death. But if they want somebody to be put to death, they have to seek the death that sentence through the Roman authority. So it was uh, this group of people that um, verse 11 is talking about here when he said, the Jews sought him at the feast and said, where is he? And by them saying, where is he? They, they're, they're really seeking him to really arrest him and to kill him. They were anxious to really do him harm. They are not saying where is he in the sense that they're glad to see him and uh, they appreciate seeing him. They wanted was to arrest him and they wanted was to do him bodily harm. And, uh, you know, what I'm noticing here is that Jesus, he was a man of wisdom. He used wisdom in the sense that he knew if he went up to Jerusalem to the feast at the early stage that the Jewish leaders were waiting to arrest him. So therefore, he used wisdom. And that's what we were talking about last week. We were talking about the, the definition, the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is when you know something, when you have advanced knowledge of something. And wisdom is when you utilize that knowledge that you have. You put that wisdom, you put that knowledge into operation. So wisdom is knowledge at work. 
When you put knowledge to work, it becomes wisdom. So Jesus used wisdom in the sense that he did not go up at the early part of the feast because he knew that these Jewish people were waiting for him. And we can take a lot of example here from the Lord Jesus. And uh, we have to use wisdom because the Bible tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. It is the most important thing. It's a very important thing in the life of the Christian, using wisdom. And we see that the Lord Jesus, he used wisdom. And because he used wisdom, he, the, the Jewish people wasn't able to arrest him and to do him bodily harm. Because had he go up to Jerusalem at that time, there's a possibility that they might have tried to kill him. And uh, the death of Jesus was six months ahead of time. Uh, Jesus' death took place six months after this uh, uh, circumstances that is happening here. Because it was the other year during the past over time that they put Jesus to death. Jesus knew that the time for him to die was not the right time. This time was not the right time for him to die. Because according to prophecy, Jesus had to die during the time of Passover. It was during the time of Passover that they take all of the lambs. It is believed that they, at Passover time they will sacrifice more than 250,000 uh, lambs will be sacrificed uh, on the Temple Mount. And uh, the, the sacrificial offering was so great that it is, it is said that the blood from these animals will flow. It will run down, you know, and go down to the, the Tidron Valley because it was so much um, um, animals that was being slaughtered uh, on that day. So Jesus, knowing that he had to fulfill prophecy and he is the Lord of God that was slain before the foundation of the world, he had to be killed on that same day when all of those sacrifices was going on in the temple so that he can uh, portray the Lamb of God. He is the Lamb of God. And uh, when you read in the New Testament, you will see that the Jewish leaders, they try all you know, their best, they try their best to avoid killing Jesus on that time. But they couldn't avoid it. They didn't want to um, uh, uh, crucify him during the time of Passover. But God had it in his plan and in his will that even though the Jewish people didn't want to sacrifice Jesus during Passover time, they couldn't avoid it. So this time that we are talking about here, the time when the tabernacle, the Feast of Tabernacle was going on, that wasn't the right time for him to be killed. So therefore, he had to avoid every opportunity, you know, uh, so that he will not get himself into harm's way. Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, well, uh, not really, you know, because uh, you will see in, in some different instances where they, you remember sometimes uh, Jesus, he said something and the people were so upset and they wanted us to take him and he just calmly walked through the crowd. Even though they, they want to hold him, he just walked through the crowd and he escaped from them. They, they, they couldn't really lay hands on him until the time is right, until the time is right for them to put him to death. But, um, you know, he knew that they were waiting for him. He knew that the Jewish people, the Jewish leaders, were waiting for him at Jerusalem. And we have to, we have to understand that at that time, it was thousands upon thousands of people who was gathering in Jerusalem at that time. And uh, the Lord, he knows the end, you know, before the beginning. And had he go up to Jerusalem at that particular time, and uh, the leaders tried to arrest him. Because we have to take into account too, that Jesus had a lot of supporters. He had a lot of people who was against him. And a lot of people who was for him. So uh, um, being uh, in that particular situation, the, the Jewish people were waiting for a Messiah. And if the Jewish authority tried to arrest Jesus during that time, it might have caused a big revolt. So Jesus knew that the time for his death wasn't right. So therefore, even though he had the power to lay his life down, and he had the power to take it up again, which we all know that, he knew that the time for him to die wasn't the right time. 
So therefore, he wasn't going to expose himself to it. And I think it shows that Jesus was a man of wisdom. Even though he had everything in, in his control, he had the whole world in his hand, he is a man of wisdom and he used wisdom. Maybe, you know, if it was one of us who probably had such power and authority at our disposal, we would say, well, listen, man, I don't really care. I'll just go up there and we'll just, you know, I'll just uh, maybe blind all of them or maybe, you know, do something or call down fire from heaven and do something to stop them from, you know, arresting me. But he didn't do that. You see, Jesus wasn't afraid of death. Jesus wasn't afraid of death. You know, we, 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 we know that, you know, from the, the scripture, you know, um, when he was in the, the Garden of Gethsemane, and he prayed and he said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus wasn't really afraid of dying. But what we are saying is that because he knew, he knew what, what's in the heart of men. He knew that the, these people, the Jewish uh, leaders, they were waiting and they were, they were waiting, they were planning to do him badly harm. I'm sure that if he went up to Jerusalem at that time, because his time for dying was not the right time, he would not have allowed them to kill him. I, I, I believe that. But he knew that the time was not right. He didn't want to cause any commotion. Didn't want to cause any commotion, you know, because that wasn't the right time for him to die. Yes, he had the power to stop them from making any kind of advance towards him to arrest him. Just like how he get away from them different times before. He could have do that, but this time... He chose that, uh, that he's not going to go up to the feast at the early part of the feast because he didn't want to cause that kind of commotion with them. <clears throat> All right? I don't know if that helped you, um, brother, but that's, that's the way I see it. Uh, Jesus didn't want to cause such, you know, um, eruption during that uh, time of the, the tabernacle celebration because that would have just maybe caused uh, more or less like a revolt against the Roman authority, and uh, that will have bring down more persecution on the Jewish people. So uh, I think he probably, knowing the end from the beginning, knowing everything before it happened, he took all of that into consideration, and that's the reason why the Bible tells us that he went up secretly, because he didn't want anything else to come out of it. Praise the Lord. All right, verse um, 12, is it? And uh, there was much... Uh, murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, he is a good man. Others said, nay, but he deceiveth the people. So, uh, even among the Jewish population, they were murmuring. And, you know, this really shows us that murmuring is a typical thing amongst the Jewish people. Even from way back in the Old Testament, they will murmur against Moses. They will murmur against God. And murmuring is not a good thing. Murmuring is when you start to complain and you start to gripe and you start to, you know, fuss about things. You know, there are times that we have to just stay silent. And even though things going on in our life that we don't agree with, things may not be working out in our favor, the worst thing we could do is start to, you know, murmuring, start griping and you're complaining and everybody is telling, boy, you hear what's going on with me? Oh, you hear what I'm facing? No, sometimes you just have to just... Stay uh, silent, be still, and know that God is God. And here we see that these people, even uh, murmuring, it seems like it runs in the vein of these Jewish people. Murmuring was a big thing with their forefathers, and we see even in the time of Jesus, they continue that same kind of thing. They were murmuring, murmuring among themselves, complaining, fussing, arguing among the people concerning him. And it said, for some said, he's a good man. Others said, nay, but he deceived the people. Now, they are given two descriptions of who they think Jesus is. And both of them is wrong. They saying that Jesus is a good man is not a description that we as Bible-believing people should accept from anybody who try to tell us that Jesus is just a, a good man. Jesus is not just a mere good man. You know, because if he was a mere good man, then he couldn't claim to be God. 
You know, there are people today who try to tell us that Jesus, yes, you know, I believe in Jesus. He was a good man. And they don't want to go further than that. The um, Muslim folks will tell you that they believe that Jesus was a prophet. And they believe that he was a good man. But they don't, they, they're not going to go further to say that he was God. But Jesus was more than a good man. And here we see the people here saying that they believe that he was a good man. But he was more than a good man. He was God. Jesus never claimed this title. This is not a title that Jesus claimed for himself. A good man. <laughs> because he was more than a good man. He said, greater than Solomon is here. He is greater than the temple. He is greater than Moses. Greater than the angels. And all of that. And uh, others said, nay, but he deceived the people. What they're saying is that Jesus was a deceiver. He was a magician. That is what that word means. They're saying that Jesus... He was walking tricks. He was a magician. And we all know by reading the scripture, Jesus wasn't any mag magician. And, you know, when you look what is going on in the church today, you know, and you see some of the things that are taking place in, in the church today, it is putting a bad name, not only on Christianity, but it's putting a bad name on the Lord Jesus Christ. When you see some of the, the tricks, some of these so-called, you know, Telling evangelists trying to pull and you know on people and I was, this morning I was telling my wife that even the, the people of the world even the unsaved people they knew that what is going on they, what is going on in Christianity today is a fake even the unsaved people the people who don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior all of this uh, craving for money and some of these fake miracles that you see they're portraying today. Even the unsaved, they knew that it's, 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 it's a trick. So um, it goes back, way back in Bible time. These people, they were saying that Jesus, Jesus was a deceiver. In other words, he was, a, he, was a, he, he was a magician. But Jesus wasn't a deceiver. He wasn't a ma magician as they claim to, uh, to be. But in, in verse 13 he said, How be it, no man speak openly of him for fear of the Jews. The multitude of people, even though they were susuing among themselves who Jesus was, they wasn't really speaking openly because they were afraid of the Jewish authority. You see, at that time the Jewish authority, they didn't come out openly and give their opinion on who they think Jesus was. So therefore, the people, they wasn't going to risk being thrown out of the temple or thrown out of the, um, out of the um, synagogue. They didn't want to be disfellowshipped from the temple, disfellowshipped from the synagogue. So therefore, they were just speaking under their breath, you know, concerning who they think Jesus was because they did not want to upset their Jewish leaders. So the Bible tells us that they did not speak openly for fear of the Jews. You know, I think what this is showing me here is that every one of us, where our decision uh, for Christ is concerned, every one of us need to make our own decision, personal decision. We can't look on, a, on another person. We can't be afraid of what somebody else might say, you know, in terms of the decision that we'll make for the Lord. Each person has to make his own decision where God is concerned can't be under any kind of a fear or intimidation from anybody as the Jewish people was here about Jesus. Everybody will have to stand before God and they will have to give an account of themselves to Him at the time of judgment. And in verse 14 he said, Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. So this is the time that Jesus really arrived at Jerusalem. He arrived at Jerusalem in the middle of the feast. In other words, uh, maybe four days already gone when he arrived at the feast. And here the Bible is telling us that when he arrived at the feast, he went up into the temple and taught. And uh, I think what this is showing us here is that Jesus had some authority. He had some recognition because could you imagine he wasn't there early. He wasn't there at the early part of the feast. And as soon as he reached up, uh, at the, you know, the middle of the feast, he was able to go into the temple and start teaching. And uh, it means that people recognize 
and they acknowledge him. Some people recognize and some people acknowledge him. For him to get that platform to go and teach in the temple, he, he, he has some kind of um, recognition there. And uh, in verse 15 tells us, and the Jews marvel, and the Jews here again is talking about the leaders. And listen to what they're saying. The Jews marvel, they were surprised, saying, how knoweth this man letters, having never learned. And what this is saying, this is not saying that Jesus was illiterate. This is not saying that Jesus didn't know the Jewish alphabet. And what they're saying here is that Jesus didn't have any credential. They are saying that Jesus didn't go to rabbinic school. They are saying that Jesus didn't um, attend Bible college, Bible seminary. Jesus didn't go to their seminary. So therefore, he wasn't a qualified teacher. How come he is teaching? He wasn't a qualified person. He don't have any certificate. He don't have any credential. You know, I remember years ago when, before I become a ordained minister, I was preaching for more than 25 years. I preached in church. I started out preaching in church. I preach in Oakmere service all, you know, in Lowman's area, in Chapman's, uh, Larders, and all these Union, and Long Peace, and New Grounds, and all those area, Canary, and all these places. We used to go and have Oakmere service and preach in outside uh, Crusade, and all of that. I go in Trinidad, continue doing the same thing. I did some of that in um, Grenada, and all of that. I came here, I did a lot of preaching. Uh, in Church of God of Prophecy. Then I went to um, uh, Canada Christian College, which is the most recognized Bible college in Ontario, to get um, uh, certification. And they refused to give me certification because they said that I, I didn't attend Bible college. And uh, because I didn't attend Bible college, they didn't give me any ordination. I have to sign up with their college and uh, that, that the college there, I think sometimes it might go for about um, five or six years before you can receive your, your um, certificate, whether it's a bachelor degree or doctorate or whatever they give out. It takes you a long time before you get that. But then one of the course back in that time, it cost, it's, it, it's 400 and something dollars. 400 and something dollars to um, pay for one of these courses. And uh, I think it, at that time it was 40-something of courses that you have to do before you can um, achieve your bachelor degree. So because I didn't attend Bible college, they did not give me any um, certification. I signed up and, you know, signed up with them, and I was there for a while. I think I did about maybe 10 of the courses, and even while going to the Bible college there, I found out that some of the people who teach me, some of the professors, some of the things that they try to teach me, I am far advanced. I am more advanced and more able to uh, explain some of the things that they're trying to teach uh, at the Bible college. And you go there and you notice some of, the, some of the professors, they are not born again. Some of the professors in these colleges, they are not born again people. You know, just um, ordinary um, Methodist uh, maybe some of them are Catholic, but they're not born again people, and they're teaching. But my point is they refuse to give me the certification of ordination because I didn't go to their school. And it's the same thing Jesus was facing here. Jesus, um, the Jewish leaders didn't want to recognize him because he didn't went to rabbinic school. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, is there any question anybody would like to ask or any comment anybody would like to ask? Uh, before we, people yeah, had they had leaders. Eh? They have they have the um, they have the, the Sanhedrin council. They have those seventy elders um, who was um, in charge of the temple. That's what I'm saying. I believe that Jesus probably has some recognition um, there for him to really get that platform. I remember one time uh, Jesus. Um, I think it was in Luke chapter four. You remember when he went into the, into the temple? And he was given the book, he was given the Old Testament scripture to read, and then he opened his mouth and he started reading uh, from, and Jesus started reading from the, 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 the very place where the rabbi, uh, the previous um, Sabbath, 
before left off because um, you know, the way how they used to operate in the temple back there is that they will read from this big scroll. They didn't have any division of chapters like how we have division uh, today. You know, they have the Old Testament um, thing. It's a scroll. They roll it out and they start to read. And wherever they reach, they stop there and the next week they'll pick up back from there. And uh, Jesus, uh, they give him uh, the privilege to, 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 to read. So I'm saying that uh, Jesus has some recognition. He, he, he was recognized by, by somebody who, um, um, who is in charge of the temple for him to get that platform. Yes. But you have to understand too that not all of them, not all of them, because the Bible said that some of some of the the elders of the Jews they believe what Jesus said, but for fear of being put out of the temple, put out of the synagogue, they held their peace. Even Nicodemus, Nicodemus, he was one of the Sanhedrin. Um, he was on the Sanhedrin council, and uh, the Bible that's the reason why he went to Jesus by night because. He didn't want his, uh, the rest of the, the, the guys, the leaders, to find out that he was going to Jesus by night. So that's why I'm saying that it have, Jesus has some supporters. Even within the Sanhedrin council, he has some supporters. And uh, uh, they didn't want to um, cause any um, disfavor, the, the, the leaders of the temple, because there was a lot of people gathering in Jerusalem at that time in the temple, thousands of people. A lot of people, as I said, recognized Jesus and for them to really deny him uh, to have a platform, it would have made them look bad. You know, so I, I don't think they would have wanted to deny giving him the platform to, to, to do that. Maybe they were surprised to hear him, you know, the subject that he was dealing with or the way he was expressing himself. Because the Bible tells us here that they marvel when they hear what he was saying. They marvel saying, how knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. So uh, Jesus is saying, well, my teaching is not mine. And this was a slap in the face of these people. What, the, what he was saying to them is that what you are teaching, you are teaching your own teaching. You are teaching your own doctrine. But what I'm teaching you is not mine. What I'm teaching you is from God. I remember one time that Jesus was teaching again and in the temple and the people who were listening, they were amazed the way how he teach because they said his teaching was not like the scribes and Pharisees. They, they, they were amazed the way how he was um, explaining the scriptures. And, uh, you know, these Jewish leaders, even though they were the leaders of the, the people, they were not really um, explaining the scriptures the way how they were supposed to do it because they... Um, put a lot of man-made teaching. They extend a lot of things that are not supposed to be extended, you know, where the teaching of the Bible is concerned. They add, keep adding, and they keep adding, you know, to um, the Old Testament scriptures. A lot of um, tradition. Tradition have more authority in their time more than the Word of God itself. So all of that, you know, was going on. But as I was saying, I believe that Jesus, he, he, you know, he has some some kind of um, recognition for him to really get the platform to really to, to speak in the temple. Yeah, he could have, but he chose not to. And you see, where, we have to understand, when, when we study the Bible, wherever God says stop, when God says stop, we're supposed to stop. In, in this case, Jesus said, well, I ain't going... We have to acknowledge within ourselves that he knows more than everybody else. And he has to have some reason. Jesus must have a, a legitimate reason why he didn't want to, to go up to Jerusalem. And as I said, the reason that, uh, one of the reasons, one of the main reasons that he, he didn't want to go up at that time is because they wanted us to kill him. And he didn't want to, he didn't want to expose himself to that. So therefore, yes, we know that he, if he did make the decision to go at the beginning of the feast, he could have get away from them. We read different times where they were upset with him 
And after he preached the word of God, they become upset with him and they were planning to push him over a cliff. But what he did, he didn't allow them to push him over the cliff. What he did, he just calmly, he walked away. I believe that uh, these guys, they were trying to hold him, but they just, they didn't just see where he go. He just disappeared. So he could have done that if he wanted to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that, that was, that was um, I think, was when he was, uh, I think it was when he was in the garden. It was just before the, the crucifixion. Yes, he, he could have done all that. You know. Uh, but the point is, he chose that he wasn't going. He, 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 and the reason why he didn't go up at that time is not because he was afraid. It's not because that he, because Jesus could have gone up there and just blind all of them. He could have gone up there and just, you know, make all of these guys become, you know, crippling their arm. They can't even use their arm. He could have just gone up there and make everybody dumb if he wanted to. But he chose not to. You know, he, he chose not to do that. He decided he's going to, he's going to, um, you know, stay back and go up to uh, the feast when the time was right. Because as I said, the time, he said that, not me said that. He said that the time was not right. And... Just like how Jesus was on God's time clock. We as children of God, we have to do things in that way too. We have to do things when we're, when we're doing anything, when we're making a decision. We have to have God approval. We have to seek God. We have to know that the time is right for us to do certain things. Just like how Jesus was waiting for the opportune time, for the, the appointed time that God appointed for him to, to make whatever move he needs to make. It's the same thing we today. We need to seek God when we, we have any kind of decision to make. You know, we have to do something. You have to say something or whatever. You need to uh, make sure that God uh, approves and he gives you the okay. Praise the Lord. All right. Any other question or any other comment before we close? Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. We bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you, Lord, for your words. Thank you, Lord, for the Lord Jesus Christ, the way that he operates, the wisdom, the knowledge that he, he um, expressed in his ministry. Help us, O oh God, Lord, to follow in your step, Lord. I pray that the Holy Spirit will engrave the word of God in our mind. In the name of Jesus, give us grace, Lord, so that we can walk before you, Lord, in humility and we can use Oh God, Lord, wisdom in every decision that is before us. Continue to bless us as we continue in our time of worship throughout this time. We ask these blessings in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord.